Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Combat Corner. Power coming right, on the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez. Show my. We are going to be talking everything UFC 307. This is a recap of this card that took place Saturday night. As I record, that was last night into this morning because that card. I thought initially was pretty good, but that's really because I thought Alex Pereira was going to decapitate Khalil Roundtree. Now, he did, but it took four rounds. But before we jump in, thank you so much for your continued support of our channel. We are growing closer and closer to 6,000 subscribers. Help us get there by the end of the week. We greatly appreciate you. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, pound that like button, share these videos. The comments are what help us grow and get people to see us. And watch the videos in full. That's even better, too. You don't have to watch it in one speed. Watch it in 1.25. Watch it in 1.5. And I'll sound really, 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 really fast. Let's talk about UFC 307. Brother, 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 brother. I went eight and four in my picks. Okay. We'll recap my picks real fast before we jump into everything involving this fight card, which left me feeling great for the first time in a while. In terms of the fights, in terms of certain judging components, eh, I I know what Dana White said about the judging. But, you know, it's it's real easy that he keeps talking about judging, but he never, he never does anything about it. Like, that's what bugs me. Like, bro, bro, <coughs> bro, you are the president of the UFC. You, are, you have so much power and influence. Stop talking about judging. Why don't you, boss man, come together with the commission and all that stuff and come up with some actual rules on judging UFC fights? Because one of the rules is control. One of the the aspects of control of of UFC judging, effective striking, grappling, uh, what was it? What's the other one? Um, uh, Control the octagon. I mean, you, you know, all these different things, but people have different opinions on what is good and what isn't. Like Dana White even said in his press conference, well, if you stop the takedown, isn't that as good as I, no, it's not. If I continue to try to get the takedown, I'm pushing you, I'm pushing you, I'm pushing you, I'm pushing you, and you stop me from doing it, that's great. But I'm the offensive party. I'm the one pushing the pace. Because if I wasn't doing this, what would you be doing? That's an opinion for another day. But if you have such a problem with these judges, Dana, do something about it. Have UFC classes for these guys. Set up real rules so you determine what is the actual criteria for judging a fight? That said, let's just jump in real quick. Court McGee beat Tim Means. I picked Mick Means. He lost. I picked Carla Esparza to win her final fight against Tisha Bennington. Many people had a problem with that fight decision. Tisha Bennington was absolutely freaking flabbergasted, shocked that she got the decision. Then she lied about it in the post-fight interview. Oh, I thought it. No, sweetheart. You freaking had your hammer. It's like, huh? You did not think you won. Esparza knew she won. You knew Esparza won. But maybe that was the UFC's way of saying, Carlo, we don't want you to try to come back if you win because we know you're boring. And that's what we think. We think you're boring. So we don't want you to come back. So we're going to ensure that you lose this fight. I thought Esparza won. She lost. She did retire at the end. Great career. Congratulations to her. Salute Carla Esparza. Ryan Spann submits Ovin St. Prue, St. Prue in the first 95 seconds. Remember what Anthony Smith says, Anthony Smith said about Ryan Spann. He's going to come out. He's a freak athlete. He's going to come out like a ball on fire. And if you can get past the first round against him, he will quit. OSP didn't get past the first 95 seconds. OSP, you're 41 years old. Salute you. Salute to you, my guy. Retire. It's over. I picked Span in that fight. 
I picked Caesar Almeida over Poteta. It was a decision, unanimous decision. I picked Alex Hernandez over Austin Hubbard. Split decision. Um, those are cards are crazy. 27, 30, 27, 27, 30, 29, 20, 29, 28. What did one judge see the other two didn't see? I, I don't know. Women's strawweight, Isman Lucindo versus Marina, Marina Rodriguez. I say the Rodriguez because I my, my name is Rodriguez Shoma, and I'm sorry. Maybe in Brazil they say the Rodriguez. I can't pronounce it that way. Sorry. Split decision win for Lucindo. Joaquin Buckley was heading to a loss until he exploded on Wonder Boy in the third round and finished him with a knockout with 217 to go. 217 into the round. That was a, I mean, Wonder Boy, 41. Again, salute to you, my guy, but it's time to go. Retire. It's over. I expected more of I, I expected more of Joaquin Buckley. He didn't, he didn't, he got the win. He had a flash, not a flashy knockout. He was losing. He was losing. Now we jump into the main card. So I picked Buckley. I picked Rodriguez. So at this point I got, I'm 0-1, 0-2, 1-2, 2-2, 3-2, 3-3, 4-3, 5-4, 6-4, 7-4, 8-4, 9-4, 10-4, 11-4, 12-4, 13-4, 14-4, 15-4, 16-4, 17
laid up against the fence or being pressed against the fence and I can't get you down. I'm trying to and I can't I keep failing. Why am I being taken away from that 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 that, that position? Why am I losing position there? Because you're not doing anything. Again, that was the real fight. I think that Dana White had a big problem with, along with probably Esparza Pennington, unless unless the UFC wanted Esparza to lose. Let's jump and talk about these last, these main two fights right here. Alex Pereira and Khalil Roundtree. Holy shit. Khalil Roundtree. <laughs> salute to you, my guy. That man came to fight. That man brought a fight. While we have twats like Jamal Hill sitting in the crowd doing this, <sighs> like he just woke up from a nap. Motherfucker, that dude knocked you on your ass. Pereira knocked you on your ass. And in my belief, Khalil Roundtree would do the same damn thing. I think he would do the same damn thing to you. He would knock you on your ass with your glass jaw, motherfucker. I can't stand that shit. There's one thing about MMA that has started to turn me, that turns me off at times. It's the ultimate disrespect component. You're not hyping a fight doing that shit. Uh, that's not, dude, you should be standing up clapping for those two dudes. What the fuck is wrong with you? Because if you were in that fucking firefight, you'd want people to clap for you. And you would have earned that respect and earned that clap and adulation for you. And you're sitting here doing this. Uh, those men put their lives on the line. Did you see Khalil Roundtree's face at the end of that fight? That man had a gash here, another cut here, a cut here. His nose is split open. He's got blood pouring out his damn nose. I mean, he's bleeding everywhere. And he is fighting. And he dropped Alex Pereira in the second round with a kick. He dropped him. It was glancing, but he put Alex Pereira to a knee. I thought Pereira would win that fight in four minutes. I thought he would knock Khalil Roundtree's head off inside of four minutes. Khalil Roundtree came to fight. He was I think where he kind of like messed up a little bit was the first round. He came out way too hot. What I mean by way too hot, he emptied tank in the first round. End of the first round, he's hanging over the on the on the you know, on the rent on the cage. He came out way too hard. I know what he wanted to do, but it was just it was there were levels to the like, like it was just he didn't control his energy. You're fighting at way high altitude. He didn't control his energy well enough in that fight. And that's an experience thing, but he also knows he's probably never getting another chance. He probably knows this is the last chance he's going to have. He's 34 years old. He's ranked eighth. If you look at the guys he's fought, he, he last beat Anthony Smith. He hasn't fought, you know, Jean Blakovich. He hasn't fought uh, Rakic. He hasn't fought Yuri. He hasn't fought... Magomed and Kalaev. He hasn't fought all these guys that are ranked ahead of him. So what you have is a situation where he got this opportunity, I think because of the style, and that the UFC wanted to pair up these two guys to strike. And they really didn't want to give Ankalaev the fight yet because they don't think that Ankalaev truly deserves or earned it. I don't think Ankalaev earned it. If you want to be, if you want to be 100 percent honest with me, I don't think he's earned it. <clears throat> But end of the day, I mean, Khalil Roundtree, man, salute to you, my guy. That was a hell of a freaking performance. You brought that fight to Pereira. You were no joke. I thought Pereira in the first two rounds kind of cruised. I think he kind of underestimated how good Khalil Roundtree could be. Roundtree could be. And that's why it looked like that. I've never seen Khalil Roundtree look so athletic. Maybe I've had my eyes closed when he's fought because I've never seen him I've always seen him be more of a stalker, like stalking you down. Where in this fight, he's bouncing, he's bouncing, bouncing. He's moving, he's moving fat. I mean, he's moving around. He's making, like, Pereira's trying to stalk him down. I, I thought he looked great. I really think he looked great. He landed some shots. He moused up Pereira's eye a little bit. But after round two, and I will say this, I had Roundtree 2-0. I had Roundtree up 2-0 after two rounds. 
I did. And at that point, I'm sitting here saying Pereira better get his foot on the gas because he's going to lose. He could lose his fight because he, he gave those first two rounds away, in my opinion. He just he wasn't active enough. Now, round three, he starts, he pushes the gas and you start seeing the damage being, he's doing damage, damage, damage. I thought the fight would end in round four. Now, I will tell you this I think Mark Goddard nearly got Khalil Roundtree killed. He got, he got, he got Khalil Roundtree nearly unalived because that fight should have been stopped probably two minutes earlier. He let Khalil Roundtree get absolutely pummeled by Pereira. Pereira was bombing him, dude. Bombing him. That was, I mean, man, when he finally finished, I mean, you see the blood was pouring, bro. Pereira hits, and, and then he's telling, I think it was Daniel Cormier, where he said, I've never heard thudding strikes like that in my life, in my career. And yet you let the fight go for two more minutes, bro. What are you doing? Like, you take a lot of years off that man's life letting that go that long. Because I thought that fight was over two minutes into the third, into the fourth round. It was over. He was barely able to, I mean, yeah, I guess he has a swinging chance, but that fight was done. I don't think Roundtree needed that extra damage, man. It was unnecessary. Should have been stopped earlier. But absolutely incredible fight. Deservedly so, fight of the night. Those dudes came out and they did their thing. They absolutely did their thing. And I think they earned everything they got. That was an awesome fight. And it's one of those things where, you know, when people talk about <clears throat> people talk about the fights and, and they and they think of when they say, this card is so great, blah, blah, blah. This card is not great, blah, blah, blah. What makes a great card to me is when two fighters enter that cage and they lay it on the line and you see an evenly matched competition where they are giving what they're getting. People will say, oh, these guys have names. Yes, you want to have names on pay-per-view. You, you need names on pay-per-view. But I'm going to give you an example. Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy winning over Buckley would have been a disaster for the UFC. You can't have the 41-year-old who should be retiring beating the 30-year-old who's supposed to be, or they're seemingly they're trying to build him into something. Like you can't have that happen. Right? So, but at the same time. The way Buckley won helps him a lot because it shows him that shows people that he can. And you can have an opinion. You want to say, well, you know, it shows that he's really not that good because he's almost lost to a 41 year old guy who's long as hell in the tooth. Or it can also tell you, show you that, you know what? He's actually he fought through adversity and he's never going to stop fighting. And he pulled out a knockout in the third round in a fight he was losing. So you can view it a few different ways. I think at the end of the day, it's beneficial to Buckley and how he got that win. Like, I would say this. If he knocked him out inside of three minutes, are you sitting here saying, oh, okay, expected. Expected. At least I didn't. I expected that. I didn't expect. I mean, it was I, – I figured he'd, he'd win an easy decision or because I, I thought he'd take him down. It he, he would be an easy decision or he'd knock him out, really. But, then, I mean, when it comes down to it, like, you need these fights. So if you – let's say, for example – I like fights that have meaning. I don't like puff, puffery fights. I don't like fights that don't increase your opportunity to get in the in, in in the conversation for a bell. So, for example, I don't really know why Alexander Hernandez and Austin Hubbard were not on the early prelim. I would think that you would give Carla Esparza more respect and put her on the actual prelim. And put her right under the Joaquin Buckley Stephen Thompson fight. Just out of respect, right? Cesar Almeida and Ihor Poteria are not well known commodities. 
they probably could be on the early prelim, but I know this card lost fights, so it's only a 12 fight card. But then you have fights like, for example, I, I think that you lead off with Jose Aldo and Mario Batista, and you put Kayla Harrison and Vieira as the number three fight. But then if you would have gotten a snoozer for the first fight, so it, you know, it worked itself out. But I, I'm one that likes to have fights with names of pe people with names um, who also leave it in there, and these guys have an even fight. So I, I loved everything about the Pereira Roundtree fight. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And I'm gonna tell you right now, Juliana Pena and Raquel Pennington. I love that fight too. I love that fight. You got to see a lot from both of those women because I'm gonna tell you right now, I thought Pena won the first three rounds. Period. I picked Pena to win by finishing the second round. I thought she won the first three rounds. I thought she won round one. I thought she, I thought. I thought rounds two and three were so clearly her rounds. She won those clearly. Round one was a closer round, but I thought she won the round. I thought she controlled the round. I thought she did the more damage in the round. Round four, she got sloppy. She got sloppy. And she damn near got herself knocked out. And what's funny as hell is that Raquel Penton never dropped anybody in her career. And Juliana Pena does not get, has never been knocked out. I don't think she's ever been knocked out by KO. Um, submission, submission, decision, submission. Okay, doctor stoppage. That's not that's not a KO. Doctor stoppage. Why that's not the same as getting knocked out. So she's never been knocked out. So you have a tough woman in Pena who took a lot of shots from Amanda Nunes over two fights. She's in control of the fight. She gets sloppy in round four and damn near gets knocked out. Keeps fighting. Round five, they're you see, this is where I get I get frustrated. I listen to the glazing being done by Joe Rogan and Daniel Cormier and John Anik. Guys, I get it. I get it. I see who you want to win. I see who you want to win. It seems like that's part of the script, is that you really want Pennington to win. I'm gonna tell you right now, Pena winning is way better for the UFC. Did Pennington close the show? Probably a little bit better. Yeah, maybe. Round five was close. I have a friend that gave round five to Pena. I thought round five was actually really close. Pena was countering everything, everything that um, Pennington threw her way. She landed some big shots. I think the reality of that fifth round was the fact that you, from watching it, you see... Pena maybe getting rocked. I don't think she was getting rocked in round five. I thought she was just gassed. Thought she was dead ass tired. So if you look at round one, she outlanded her. She outlanded her and she out, they threw evenly. She outlanded her. You know, round two, she got outlanded, but she had like three minutes on top, dominating position. Dominated the, she dominated position. Round three, completely dominated that round. Round four. This is a round that Pennington won. She drops her. But she didn't, like, land so many more strikes than Pena did. She didn't. I just thought Pena started getting tired. That altitude maybe messed with her a bit. Maybe she should have been out there training in altitude. They always use that altitude thing. But it's real. It's real. Round five. Again, Fairly close round. Did, did I give it to Pennington? Yes, I did. But it wasn't like some beat down in the round, like the way Cormier and, and Anik and, and Rogan were pushing. And the way they, they were so quick to say, oh, round one, like I don't know what they were watching. Round one, I thought Pena won the round. And clearly, thankfully, that was the deciding round. So when you hear about people complaining about judging, I thought there was nothing wrong with the judging in that fight. Nothing. You had two and two, and round one was the deciding factor, and two judges gave it to Pena, and one gave it to Pennington. And at the end of the day, Pena re re regains the championship. She's now the title holder. And more than likely, she will end up fighting Kayla Harrison next. Although, I will say this. It wouldn't bother me one bit if these two ladies rematched. And you'll say I'm crazy. I would love to see Amanda Nunes come back personally and fight.
Pena finally and have that trilogy fight. But at the same time, if you're asking for who the better competitor against Harrison is, it's got to be Pena. Why? Because Pena can wrestle. Pennington will get taken. Pennington's Pennington has to stay standing. And I don't know that how well she she's strong as hell. I don't know how well she can stay on her feet against Harrison. And that would be the one question I have. If she stays on her feet, she knocks Harrison's ass out. I think that Pennington would knock Harrison out. But if she doesn't and gets ridden for you saw she could break, she couldn't get up against Pena. And Pena's not as big as Harrison. So I think there's there's things to all these fights. I wouldn't be I would not have any problem with seeing these two people these two women rematch because it was a great fight. I thought it was, I thought it was a great fight. I I really did. It was a lot better than I expected it to be, and I guess that's part of why I thought it was a great fight because it was a lot better than I, I expected. Because I never thought Raquel Pennington was all Pennington was all that good. I know she's won six and she had won six in a row or whatever, but this was a fight that at one point was I think ten and eight. That's not, she'd be a win one, lose one, win one, lose one. Nothing, she wasn't ever crazy impressive to me. But I was really impressed. I was impressed with how she came back in that fight. I thought she made a major mistake in round four. When she hurt Pena and she goes to the ground and starts to try to like grapple with her. I'm like, what are you doing? Let her get back up. Either you go for hammer fist or get your ass back up. I'm coming to finish your ass. Sometimes they go in for that guillot, that grappling stuff, and I'm like, it's a mistake, and, and you allow them to recover. So I was very impressed with both women. Um, I thought it was funny how Pena at the end is saying, yeah, I want Nunez. I don't want – and Harrison, they have a video of her. She's like, oh, I'm going to keep it real with you. Pena versus Harrison, the shit talking in that fight before the fight, I don't want to say you can make that a main event, but it could be. It could be a main event. The UFC has really gone out of their way to not have women's fights be main events. This one, and I remember why they wouldn't do it for Nunes, because, look, language, selling the fight, everyone knows she's probably going to win by a mile and crush the other person. I don't know who wins a Pena Harrison fight. I think Pena can beat her. I think Pena can beat her. But the trash talk that these two will get into, the fact that they were trash talking and she doesn't have the belt yet, and Harrison is sitting here saying, who have you fought? Are you dumb? Who have you fought? Come on, man. Come on now. Harrison, you know better. Because you're disrespecting Amanda Nunes by saying that, by asking that question. But I again, I was impressed. I enjoyed that card immensely, and uh, it was a lot better card than I expected it to be. I, I the, and of course that's in large part because of that main event. That main event was special, 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 special. That's all I got. Next pay per view for the UFC is on October twenty sixth. Ilya Tuporia versus Max Holloway. And we will certainly be talking more about that as we grow closer to that card. And that card is in the is in oh, uh, uh, Yaz Island Fight Island. You're gonna get to see Tuporia Holloway, Whitaker, Ch- Chemaev. There's Dan Ige again inside Lerone Murphy. That's gonna be a, that's gonna be a fight. That's a fight. Ankalaev Rakic, Shira Magomedov, and Armin Petrosian. And then you got Jeff Neal, Rafael Dos Anjos, and yeah, a bunch of other guys that live from Dagestan. A lot of Dagestani guys in this thing. That's all I got for this one, man. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. What do you think of the fight? What do you think won? Who do you think won the fight? Who do you think won that co main event? Who do you think won the Aldo fight? Who do you think won the Esparza fight? Did your respect for Khalil Roundtree go through the roof? Because I will tell you this. I don't have any interest in seeing Pereira fight Ankalaev. In fact, I hope that Rockage beats him. Because I don't think Ankalaev has done anything to deserve this, to earn it yet. 
And I don't think beating Rakic is the fight to earn it. And here's why. He might be 19-1-1, but let's look at who he's beaten. He beat Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker's washed. He has a draw with, with Blakovich. A fight I thought he lost. I thought he lost that fight. It's my opinion. I thought he lost. And before that, he beats Anthony Smith, Tiago Santos, Volkan Ozdemir, Krylov, Kutalaba. He doesn't have a win over a top five guy. Again, this is you could go around, she was ranked eighth. <clears throat> but again, we're going to have another guy that's going to have, he, to, he, beating Rockish would be his first top five win. Why not have him? I mean, if Pereira beats this dude, there's no one left that I care about watching this dude fight. At least the longer you keep it away from happening, the more we can build it up because I don't think it's a fight that most people care about. The last thing folks want to think about is Magomed Ankalaev basically crotch sniffing Pereira for five rounds. I don't want to see that shit. I'm biased. I admit it. I don't think he's going to be easy take down. I don't think he's the take down, the easy takedown that people might think or that Ankalaev might think he can be. But this division, this 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 division, I I, I mean, it's one fight left. He beats on Goliath. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you this. I will tell you this. If Alex Pereira says this is what he wants, I'm asking to fight Tom Aspinall. And he said in post-fight he's not leaving the division. You know, he's not going to go back to 185 because his boy, Sean Strickland, is training partner, and he's going to fight Drew Kiss next. But I would love – love to see him and Tom Aspinall fight. I think that would be a slobber knocker. I think you would see real fast how Tom Aspinall becomes a wrestler. Let me know your thoughts. Love to hear what you guys say. Come on now.